All right, so let's start by grabbing our assembly model component. So let's get back to Caramba and there we go. So again, we are going to start off by defining our elements. And in the previous chapter, we defined our beams with the um, line to beam component. But now, since we are dealing with hinges also, let's see another strategy, which is, I think, more appropriate for this situation which is to use basically the uh, index to beam component. So here, what we have to do is to define the, the indexes of both points that are basically the uh, beam ends. So what we have to do is first to connect all the nodes, all the points to our Caramba model, and then we have to define these indexes. So the first thing that we are going to do is to merge our points into a list, so let's get the first point, the second point, and in order to keep, um, uh, let's say, a uh, certain order, <laughs> let's add the hints as a third point, because it's the third point in our set of nodes, let's say, and let's move on to the point number four and point number five. There we go. So this could be our points, and let's connect them with our assembly model component. But now we are getting an error, but that is no big deal because if we uh, zoom in and we click onto this, into this error, it says that solution exception, there are five unconnected nodes. So what we have to do in order to eliminate this error is of course to define our um, beams connecting those nodes. So let's go for it. Now let's move this a bit, a bit downwards. And now what we have to do is to define the indexes of the starting nodes and the end nodes. So there we go. So for instance, let's start with the first node. And in this case, the first node would be the node number zero because it's the, the point uh, the with, with index zero in this uh, point list. And then let's uh, say that the end point could be the node number one, but actually, in order to make it more clear, let's use a trick here, which is to use the point list component. Because now, if we connect the points here and we set a size, for instance, of for instance of two point zero, let's see if this works. So now there we go. So now we can understand probably a bit better what we are doing. And what we have said is that we are going to define the first beam between the node number zero and node number one. And let's move on with the other elements. So now we will define the second element between the node number one and the number two, and so on and so forth. And I'm getting an error here because, of course, um, we have to do right click into these uh, panels and say multi lane data no. And again, we select multi lane data. So now, and the third element could be from the node number two to the node number three, and the final element from the node number three to the node number four. Okay, so now, uh, sorry, as we are going to see, if we connect these uh, elements with our assembly model component, now the error is gone because we are connecting all elements, all nodes, I'm sorry. But in order to make sure that we are connecting them uh, as we want, what we can do, of course, is to get the model view component here. And again, without calculating the model, we can connect our uh, model to this component here in order, in order to visualize that we are doing everything right. So now we connect it and we see uh, how our beams look like. And actually, we can all, we can even delete our point list component. And what we can do is to activate our node tags. So now we can see how the nodes are actually the points that uh, we were expecting, right? Because that was the order in which we provided the points to this um, merge component. Okay, so, so far so good, but we are not done with this component here because what we are also going to do is to assign an identifier for these beams. And this is uh, going to become necessary because as we are going to see, we are going to assign certain loads this structure which uh, they are not going to be applied to all members, right? So if we want to apply loads to some parts of our structure, we need identifiers, as we are going to see in a couple of minutes.
So the this first element, this is going to be the column number one. And then we're going to move on with the beam number one, the beam number two, and the column number two. Okay, there we go. And we do again right click, multi-line data no, and there we go. Those are my identifiers. Okay, this is looking nice. And oh, again, <laughs> in order to check that uh, we are doing everything right, we can also display the element IDs with the model view component. There we go. So this is my column number one, beam number one, uh, one beam number two, and finally the column number two. Okay, so that's nice. And now, uh, of course, these are my elements, but we need to define a cross section for them. So we already know how this works. So I'm not going to spend too much time here, but we're going to see something new now. But let's start by grabbing our cross section component here. And we're going to use again the trapezoid cross section. So we are going to define, and of course, keep in mind that you have to specify these dimensions in centimeters. So let's start off with uh, 30 centimeters for both the height and the width. And this is going to be the cross section for my columns. So what we have to do is, of course, first to define the material. So let's get the material selection component and let's select just a concrete material with, for instance, C3037. There we go, this is my material. And there we go. And we said that we want to assign this cross section to the columns. So in the first chapter, what we did is to connect the cross section directly to our elements component. But now, since we have defined identifiers for our loads later on, we can uh, also use that identifiers, those identifiers, to assign our cross sections as well. And that's what we are going to do. So here, under element ID, we are going to connect the identifiers for these cross sections. And we said that this would be the column one and the column two. So there we go, again, multi-line data, no, and there we go. Perfect, fantastic. So, uh, and we have also to connect it here. So you are not connecting it to the elements component, but directly to the assemble model component. Okay, fine. So these are my cross, this is my cross section for the columns, and we also need the cross section for the beams. So let's copy this guy here. And this is going to be for beam number one and beam number two. And let's perhaps make the height like 50 centimeters. Now to start off to make it uh, something um, a bit more clear, right? And we are going to connect it also to the assemble model component. Let's check that this is a list, but in order to make sure we can also flatten our inputs. And okay, now to check the, the, the model that it's looking nice, what we can do, of course, is both to display the cross section names. Well, no, we cannot do that because <laughs> we haven't defined cross section names. But what we can do is, of course, either to define cross section names, but a bit um, more simple, I think that we can also get our beam view component here. And now we can see my cross sections. So we can see how when we change the dimensions of this first cross section, this affects only to our, to our beams. And this second cross section is related to my columns as we are seeing. Okay, so, so far so good. And that those could be the elements of our um, Caramba mode. And now let's define the supports of our structure. So you already know how this works. So let's not spend too much time here. So we're going to get our support component and we're going to select the first point, this one, the point and the node number zero. And this is the location of our support. And let's going to fix all degrees of freedom, right? To start off. So this could be my first support. Let's copy it and let's assign it to the last point, right? The point number four. There we go, there we go. And we just need to connect these guys to the assemble model component. So support one and support two. And we check that this is a list and just to make sure we can flatten the inputs here, right? 
So these were our supports. And finally, well, almost finally, <laughs> let's define our loads. So again, we are going to get the loads component. And now we are going to define two loads, which are going to be um, uniform line loads. But we are going to assign each of them to a different load case, right? One for the vertical loads and the second one for the horizontal loads. So first, let's start off with the load case number zero. And we need to start with the number zero, not to, with the number one, because Karma is going to generate a load case number zero either way. So I strongly recommend to start with the number zero. And now, okay, now we're going to see the point. So the pin IDs uh, make reference, of course, to the elements that we want to apply the load to. And in this case, since we say that we are applying vertical loads, we are going to select our beam or beams here. So the beam IDs would be my beam one and beam two. Okay, multi lane data no. And okay, so these are my IDs. And finally, of course, I need to define the load vector. And since this is going to be in the vertical direction, we need the unit C vector component. And let's define a load of uh, 10 kilonewtons meter. And of course, it is going to point downward. So let's get the reverse component here. And there we go. And we have to make sure that we set the orientation global, right? So, because this is the C, the global C axis, and we are going to make the load, the load, sorry, point downwards. But to make sure that everything is as we expect, we are going to connect the load here with a semi model component. And now we see how the load looks like, right? We can, of course, even display the load value here. And it seems like it's working as expected. Okay. So let's move on to the other load case, right? Regarding, I don't need this guy here, regarding the, the horizontal load. So uh, for that, let's um, set the load case number one. And the identifiers are going to be, of course, my column. In this case, just the column one to make it more simple, right? Just um, Winton one say the power structure. And there we go, there we go. And of course, we need to define a, another um, load vector. In this case, it's going to be a zero kilonewtons meter and along the x axis, of course. So there we go, and there we go. And perfect. And let's connect this guy here. Again, this uh, list is not three, but let's flatten our inputs. And we are going, we are seeing our load cases here and we are displaying all load cases, but we can, of course, switch between load case number zero and load case number one, as we are going to see later. But let's stay with the load case number zero right now. Okay, and by the way, we can see that I have deleted my other support and I am, um, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to put this in the, in the recording because it's interesting, right? We are checking with our a model view component that everything is right. And I've just realized that this support here is missing because I accidentally deleted that component. So let's get it back into our Karama model. We said that we need the joint, uh, sorry, the node number four. There we go. And there, uh, and supports. Yeah, there we go. So this is my other support. Okay. So everything looks pretty nice again. So it seems like we are done. But actually, we still need to define, of course, the hints of our model. And how are we going to do that with Caramba? So basically, if we come here to the cross section subcategory, we can see that we have two different options to define our hints or our joints. We, ca we have um, on, on one hand the beam joint agent component and also the beam joints component. And now, since we are going to assign the joint or the hints to a specific node, we are going to use the beam joint agent. Later on, in the next part of this chapter, we are going to deal with truss structures, and we will see we will see how to use the beam joints uh, component to assign hints to the end of an element. But now, since we are assigning it uh, to a certain node, right, we are going to use the beam joint agent. So there we go. And we are going to specify, of course, the joint 
um, into the node number two, this guy here. So this is my node that is going to get the hints and there we go. And that would be the first step. And now what we also need to do, of course, is to define the degrees of freedom that we are going to release in this joint. And this joint, what it's going to do is to make the bending moments zero at that location. So which means, in other words, that we are uh, releasing the rotations around the y-axis at both um, sides of this joint. So that could be it. And it seems like we are done with this component, but I'm going to um, the little trick, which is actually very interesting in order to avoid um, numerical errors later on with Karama. So the trick is that we are not going to define a perfect hint, but we are going to assign a very low stiffness into it to avoid this kind of numeric errors that might happen with the calculation later on, which of course are not real errors, but numeric virtual errors. So for that, we have to define a very low stiffness, let's say 0 0.001 kilonewton meters per meter, and uh, where we need to define this as a vector. And now we need, of course, the um, vector component in the y direction, and there we go. So this would be our hints with a very low stiffness. And there we go, there we go, and this could be it. So let's connect the joint to the joint input, and we can see how we can <laughs> realize how our joint looks like with the model view component. So it seems like now, Finally, we are done with our Caramba model.